of mine tonight. Play for over. Depends. Will your friend, the football, will be there? Oh, friend! Football friend! Oh, what a support goal! Stefan Moore, that is extraordinary for Ben Garuccio! You're listening to Football Friends with Ben Garuccio and Stefan Moore. Here's what's coming up on this week's episode. We recap all the action from the A-League men's round one before looking ahead to the tasty second weekend in store. The boys add their two cents to the afternoon kickoffs debate, a 3pm kickoffs working, and we hear our very first inner game story of the week, a teenage tale on why to just impress your teammates on the pitch rather than attempt to in the nightclubs. All that and more coming up on episode two of Football Friends. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode of Football Friends with Ben and Steph. Steph, welcome to the show. Thanks, Ben. Good to good to be here. We we had a few listeners in in week one, so we decided to come back for week two. Yeah, thought we'd keep it keep it going. Um, how's your week been? Obviously, two all draw for you guys overseas in Japan. Uh, you got on the score sheet, so happy days for you. Yeah, well, the week was okay. Uh, my my first week on my own, Carla's, my wife's gone back to Australia, so it's a, a little bit more lonely here in, in Japan, but I'm able to get a bit more work done. And uh, yeah, I guess the podcast really, you know, probably put me in a good headspace because I've gone out on the weekend and, and scored one. I probably should have scored four. We copped a, a 94th, 95th minute free kick against us to draw the game, which uh, which has set us back for the promotion playoff spots, which was uh, devastating, to be honest. But yeah, we uh, we move on three games to go. And um, besides that, the week's been easy. I've got a couple of days off in Osaka now to, to recharge and get ready for the last yeah, last few games. What about yourself? Oh, Car- Carla's gone home and you're basically just living the dream. You're going to Osaka, trips here, <laughs> trips there, and you're just living the easy life. Yeah, well, we we normally we normally would come here, but um, yeah, I guess when I'm when I'm on my own, at least I, I don't have to go into all the all the designer shops with her. I can actually just do what I want to do: sit at the cafe and uh, and enjoy, read a couple of books or something, and do some work. So, pretty pretty fun on my end. Some people might think it's a little bit boring though. A bit more cash in your pockets as well, then. <laughs> um, exactly. Yeah, no, our our week's been good. Obviously, at the time now of recording, just Monday, so. Uh, first day back at training, just a light sesh today, and obviously had the game Saturday night and and Sunday off, so it was good to good to kick off with a win for us. So yeah, podcast um, one nil to the podcast, I suppose. First week of the podcast, and you're on the score sheet. We got the win with West United, so um, happy days. Yeah, exactly, exactly right. And uh, and your missus was down in Adelaide as well um, with mine, so you, you had the weekend to yourself as well. Hundred yeah, percent. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's that. Maybe, maybe it's that's maybe it's that. <laughs> It's not the I'm podcast. I'm not sure. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully they don't listen and, to it this week. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But um, <laughs> saying on Japan, Mitchell Duke got promotion with uh, Mashida, uh, someone that you know very well. Obviously, he was at your team last year, made the move, and, and now they've secured promotion. I think first time ever in the club's history. Yeah. Yeah, yeah first time. I think in the maybe only... Th- Maybe five, six years ago, they got promoted from J3, I reckon it was, or maybe a couple of years before that. But they're, yeah, they've got a massive sponsor, uh, recruited well. They got, uh, obviously, Juki, he's come in, and and Eric, uh, who got injured probably about two thirds way through the season, but a Brazilian that was at Yokohama Marinos under, I think, Ange and maybe Kevin Muscat as well. He came back from China. Um, I think he's on a, a big, big pay packet in, in J2, uh, long term deal. So he, he was happy to come back, and you know now he's got him got him promoted. Um, Juki's done well, and and I think they'll they'll recruit heavily. They've got the money, and and you can see you know when you do go up to J one, it's tough. It's tough to kind of stay up there. Yokohama FC did the same last year, and they're kind of fighting relegation. So great for Juki. Uh, I'm sure he'll yeah he'll be enjoying it next year playing in J one, and 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 hopefully hopefully I'll be there with him and with Fagiana. Yeah, so they spent the big bucks and obviously it's paid off and you boys, three more games to go. So they're sitting where, 10th? Is it 10th? 10th, yeah. Three points behind six. So it's we've only got that last that last spot up for grabs. We got three games against three teams we should win, but we, we played against the third to bottom team and, and, and mm. drew on the weekend. So No good, we, no good. We tend we tend to play better against the, the teams higher up. So let's see, three games. Um, all we can do is control 
what's in our in our way and and that's you know teams that you know Tachiki who are you know a lower team fighting relegation Akita and then the last one Kanazawa who's already relegated so we should win these three games and, and we just got to hope the other teams lose let's uh let's see how it goes yeah quality oh my A League kicked off on the weekend. I know you watched your fair share of games. Um, it was good, good obviously to just get the ball rolling, get the season underway. It's as we said, a massive preseason here, and um, just to get out of the way, first round, clear the nerves a little bit. So, what what were your thoughts on the on the weekend? Yeah, I think overall the games, the the quality of games were really good. That I watched Friday night, Adelaide, uh, my boys against Central Coast. I, I wasn't. Wasn't sure how Adelaide were going to go. I think a lot of people were in that boat were kind of putting them, you know, towards the bottom because of the young players that they had. And I I had them winning this game. I think we spoke off air and I said, I, I'm not sure about Central Coast either. Start of the game, Central Coast were probably dominating and could have scored. Joe Gauchi came up big with a couple of saves. And and then they got the injuries to, to Kautak and, and Quall. And that really unsettles, like, the whole team. They had to change the balance of it. Not saying that, you know, Central Coast would have won if that didn't happen, but it's never easy like you said you work pre-season on on these things and then four months into it you get injured in the first 20 minutes you know for a player it's a disaster um hopefully the the injuries aren't too severe but the the Adelaide young boys they they really stepped up I think after the first 20 minutes maybe they were a bit nervous you know Johnny Yule looked great out there uh, Panache at right back I think physically he's got everything he's only 18 I think as well 18 19 but you know He's just, he's a beast and he yeah, should he only get mean. stronger. Uh, you know what? Like if, if he's running up against you and you're a winger, you're thinking, well, this is going to be a fucking hard day because it takes one touch, 10 meters past you and he's made five meters on you already. Like, and you're chasing back. So I think he lost the ball quite a few times coming inside, maybe trying to do a bit too much. But once he settles in and, you know, understands when to, you know, when to play simple, when to dribble with it, maybe he can give you a call and, um, and get some advice on that one. But, I think they, you know, the young boys looked great. Uh, Nesta was, was, I think, as Cole said, was Nesta. He, he didn't light the world on fire in that game, but that's only because our expectations of him now were to be scoring a, a 20, 20 to 30 yard banger from, from you know, top corner. Yeah, but and he didn't do that. <laughs> he still had his moments, though. And like, you expect him to maybe score a worldie or something, but there's a few balls even that. You know, they're balls that are played towards the byline and you think he's chasing a dead cause and he just gets to it, somehow wraps his foot around it. He put two across the face. Ibasuki wasn't there for it, but they were fucking top balls. And yeah. even no, though he just has his right. moments, he's got he's got that raw quality. He's only going to get better. I think the other young boys will will only get better as well. And yeah, exciting exciting times for Adelaide United. It's yeah. it's good to good to see Coopers. I thought it was a good crowd. <laughs> you maybe said, oh, they should have more there. But I thought it was a good crowd. It looks yeah. quality on, on TV anyway. Yeah. I think the the best thing about about Coopers is when they did the renovation was getting all the seats to be red. So it looks great. Uh, it only holds about 15,000, 14, 15,000, I think. Uh, maybe not even that, to be honest, when you've got the standing room in. But it, it, it's a good crowd. It's nine and a half. Pushing ten, it's a pass mark though. You like for me, I, I watched the documentary and uh, and I was you know hearing Aurelia Vidmer talk about you know the the game in the NSL. You know they've got to delay it for thirty minutes because there's too many people that want to come in here. So the the thirst is there for it in Adelaide. I just I, I personally just can't understand how it's not sold out every week. And you know what, we lost Craig Goodwin. I understand people are upset about that. There's people that don't want to support the league for whatever reason. All right, whatever. But Adelaide's not a tiny city. You know, there's enough people there that love football. If you're a parent or if you're a football lover, how can you not want to go and support yeah. South Australian players that have literally, like me and you, we grew up playing. We wanted to go every week. It was up to our parents whether they took us or not. But we wanted to go every week. Could you imagine seeing, you know, players that were three, four years, five years older than you getting their debut week in after week? Like, it, it, it's actually just... It's, it's mind blowing. It, it's it, it doesn't make sense, and you've still got you know Musa Toure came on as well. Another Toure that's just looks like he's gonna um, take the league by storm. They they've got good genes, don't they? I think the sister's <laughs> not bad as well. I'm pretty sure. So like, 
I don't know what they're feeding them in that in that house, but yeah. maybe I need to uh, get there in my off season to to get some speed. I, I no, I know, yeah, and they've got, but they've got the mindset as well. They've got the mindset yeah. like this is a kid who's what it's, was it? It's, it wasn't his first game. He came on round one last year as well, didn't he? Yeah, potentially. I think, I think, I think I, the commentator yeah. said that. I'm not sure, but he's coming on. Elite game, Cooper Stadium, nearly ten thousand people there. Did not look nervous. Did not look nervous. Yeah. Had his moments and. To be fair, he came on against us in the preseason friendly we played, and he looked the exact same. I think he kicked <laughs> someone, and he was like, "He was like, get up!" Like he said something, and everyone was yeah. like, "Man, this kid! How old is this kid?" All so right, um, he's got he's got the confidence, and ah, hundred percent, yeah, he's got the confidence, and I think like what you touched on there with the um, AUFC doco, I thought that was quality. Like, I was watching it, and. I remember that game. Obviously, we lost to to you boys the week before, and I was watching that game. I remember in Melbourne on TV and seeing Adelaide Oval. And I think we can sort of touch on the the grand final decision while we're here, um, because that's now been scrapped. And obviously, we've got Unite Round taking its place January twelfth to fourteenth, I think. Um, so yeah. I think that's a probably a win all round. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Like. 100% on, on the doco for me the only disappointing thing about it it wasn't long enough and they didn't get me to, to come and speak in it either so a bit disappointed about that but obviously that you know they maybe they, they don't have my Japanese number I think that's the that's the issue there but my uh, yeah I loved that it was 20 minutes but I want I, I reckon they could have done more and everything comes down to dollars and cents at the end of the day but it was um, it was cool to see you know where the clubs come from to where it is now the grand final decision as you touched on like that was I, I, when I saw that the first 30 seconds, I, like, I had goosebumps, you know, going back to that memory. And it, and, it, and it made me, you know, I was 20 years old at the time. I think you don't realize how big a moment that is when you're so young because you kind of just think, oh, this will happen all the time. And, you know, I'm here 28 years old. I played maybe three three more years, four more years in the A-League since then. You know, made a few Nothing. semifinals, but didn't get yeah. to the grand final. And, and those, you know, in front of your friends and family, that's another thing. How is there 56,000 there that week and you don't yeah. have 20,000 members? It just, it drives me crazy. But um, the Unite round, talking about getting more fans on side, like you said, that decision is is something that, that should have should have been done. And the, the one thing that I guess I want to speak about from, from a player's perspective is when the decision was made, I didn't agree with it. I was quite vocal on Twitter about, understanding the need for the APL to generate money because they're a business that all the owners have been losing money. They've got this investment from Silver Lake, but they need a return on investment and you can't keep expecting, even though they're billionaires or you know multimillionaires, big companies, they don't want to lose money every year, millions of dollars every year. And we saw during COVID when the Fox Sports still got cut, we were stood down. We're literally getting paid job keeper money for what was it two and a half three months melbourne city i reckon were the only team getting paid we were on job keeper they didn't care about us the the, the owners at the time they were like you know what you can stay on job keeper we came back the the fa weren't giving us any money either we ended up fighting for i think it was 17 percent of our pay to go to a hub for four or five weeks and yeah as players of course we were going to do it because if we didn't do that, the Fox Sports deal wasn't there and the league was in a worse position. So we knew we had to do it. We had to do our part. But just giving the fans a bit of an understanding that these decisions that are made, they're all by, majority of them are by football people. They got that one wrong, really wrong. And they should have spoken to fans first and they should have read the room quicker, I think, to react to it. That was their biggest mistake, that the PR behind yeah. it, whatever else. I'm not defending the the decision and the way they kept going on about it, I think made it even worse. But as players, you know, during that time, we had we had no money. You know, we had to get by. We had to pay mortgages. People had to probably take out loans. They had to take out super. It, it was a really tough time. And it goes to show how fragile the league is in still. So we need ways to make money. And as a fan, I, I get it's not your responsibility to to generate money for these rich owners so that you can pay us. But if we want the league to grow, which I'm sure most people do, and then in the long run, everyone's going to benefit from it, we need to somehow all be pulling in the right way. And this Unite round um, it, it is going to be great because you've got the the men's and the women's both going to this. And I, I really do hope a lot of people get behind it because it can be it can be a special weekend. 
Yeah, hundred percent. And I think we've seen in other codes, it's it's been really successful. So there's no reason why ours can't be successful as well. Um, and I think that they are doing some, you know, junior tournaments, things like that. I think there's going to be mini ruse. Uh, I think I remember reading about. So I think if we can get as many people there as possible already, then hopefully then they'll come to the games, which is which is yeah. going to be a success for the whole league and and for all the teams as well. So I hope that it's done right. I think there's also going to be somewhere set up in Sydney that's going to be showing the the Socceroos game that week yeah. as well. Um, yeah, and I school think, holidays. Yeah. So it's it sort of does tick all the boxes. They've done it at a perfect time. It's going to be good weather. Um, why not? Why not come to a game if you're already there? And yeah, that was the first thing sort of we said to each other as soon as we saw it was like, they should do they should do heaps of junior tournaments or state yeah. tournaments. Like, you know, we used to go away to Canberra or Coffs Harbour. Why not put one strategically in Sydney that week? People are already going to be there. It's people that love football. They're playing football. They'll come to games. They'll go support their team. So I hope it's going to be a big success. I think it's probably, as I said before, all around a good good outcome for everyone involved in football. And I'm looking forward to it as a player. So yeah, like be good. Like you said, we we spoke about it, and you know, I think a lot of the the, the A League teams have academies now. So if it's not the state teams, you know, imagine you get the youth team. There's no youth competition, which is a joke in itself, I think. But, you know, if you can get the youth teams there from from every A-League club, if you can get an under-18s and under-15s from the boys and the girls, then you're just getting more people going there to play in these tournaments in the morning, essentially. And then they go and support them at night. So you're getting the parents there, you're getting the kids there. And you're really, I guess, building that, that connection um, between players as juniors to want to go and play for that club and the parents. And, and I think it's got to take time, you know. There's a lot of disappointment about some crowds and whatever else and TV ratings, but we got to build up. And and after what happened last year, it's not going to just be, you know, a magic wand. You know, you, you do a Unite round, you, you get rid of maybe the CEO, the people, the fans were, were hating or not get rid of, he moves on to another thing. But it's not going to magically change things. But there's a yeah. lot of positive in the game right now and we just need to capitalize on it and keep moving forward. So... Great for the great for the league. Um, let's let's move on to to the next game, and that was Macarthur v Brisbane Raw, which is um, an interesting game. Did you get to watch any of that before you were playing yours? Yeah, I was, I was actually watching it in the changing room. This one, <laughs> I didn't get to see all of that. I missed O'Shea's goal, but um, happy about it because he's in he's in both of our fantasy teams. Yeah. Uh, so that was that was good. A bit probably not one of his best goals. It was a bit of a cross shot. Uh, sort of thing, but they all count. And from honestly, from what I saw early, MacArthur had the better of the chances. And we spoke so yeah. much about Sydney FC and Brisbane Raw making the Australia Cup final. But from what I saw early, MacArthur had MacArthur had some great chances. And I think Rafael Borges Rodriguez looked really dangerous. He had another header before the one he yeah. scored. Um, First but he, half. I, I was thinking, fuck that! That was a good chance. Like. Great, so, great set piece routine straight from the training ground. And it was just yeah. one of those ones that you got to put it away because otherwise then you're like, fuck, now we've, we've wasted this one. And, and yeah, he has to swap. yeah, it was, it, it, it was an all round. It was actually a really exciting game that again, we don't want to talk about it all the time, but the crowds, I think it improved on last year's crowds, which is, which is not really saying much because it was so low, but it's so disappointing to see that, that, that few amount of people going to a game and it's such good quality on TV. I actually freely enjoyed it. That was probably one of my, yeah. probably the, my, my, my most favoured games of the weekend in terms of quality. Brisbane Raw played some really good stuff. Uh, looked like they were lacking, you know, just a, a number nine. I guess they were missing what he Yeah, had. that's um, what I was thinking. But, but MacArthur as well, like, you know, we didn't really know too much about him. We didn't know really what, what Miller Sajowski was going to do with him. But the Villa looked great out there. You had the two young boys in Drew and, and Rafael um, on, on the wings. Jermaine up front and I think they're you know what after seeing them I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're pushing for the top six quite comfortably because they they got Danny the Silver to come back in had a few yeah. good boys on the bench to come on so yeah interesting game Brisbane Brisbane again looked looked solid um they played like the ball was zipping about I, I think it's they're gonna only get better um yeah. but it was like actually zipping they were banging it in and you could hear Ross on the sidelines um, I think all of the all of their players will really be enjoying playing the way they're playing. It's just, yeah, you need you need a number nine, don't you? You need you need that person that's going to score goals. So you can't be relying on on O'Shea to be you know scoring 
15 goals. You know, you need other players like Milicinic and um, Berenguer, uh, Hoare, Waddingham once he's back yeah. to, to kind of... Armiento. You no, know, Armiento's injured. So you've got a few that can score goals, but, you know, you probably need three, two to three players that score, you know, 25 to 30 goals between them, I would say, if you really want to push for push for the yeah, top four, for sure. top two anyway. Yeah, I agree. And on, on Raw... The A League women's team that was their biggest ever standalone game crowd, wasn't it? Yeah, three thousand yeah. six hundred and something odd, seventy nine. So you're you're three thousand six hundred seventy nine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't Valley have my Moore. cheat sheet next to me. Not <laughs> next. <laughs> Valley Moore, Valley Moore was it was again another disappointing thing was the camera was actually on the the crowd side, so the other stand it was completely empty was was shown so it didn't look like there was many people there but yeah. when you saw the photos from the game the hill was packed that stand was packed and you know that 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 type of stadium if you can actually build that properly and that's what brisbane needs they need a 10 to 15 thousand seater stadium because it, i guarantee if that was a, a new built stadium or renovated stadium you're probably getting five to seven thousand for the women's and the men will sell it out especially especially now that they're back in brisbane and playing well but it's brilliant for the for the for the raw women's team to break the record to get a win against Sydney FC. So yeah, the so reigning flying. reigning champs. Yeah, it's um, that's all, a, all it's round, a good I win. Matilda's hype in in Sydney and Brisbane has probably been the two biggest ones, and I I guess it's no surprise because the Matildas played in both of those uh, those yeah. cities, so they probably did have the most excitement to get around the most games that were played there from the Matildas and. Let's uh, let's see, I guess, how how they can keep going with their form and and also the crowds because it's it's brilliant. But the next game of the round is the most this important is a good one for one. you anyway. The- it started off it started off in the middle of the week. I think it was Melbourne City announcing a, a partnership, a schools partnership with Tarni. Um, you know, so they're already trying to uh, get under the skin of Western United. That's that's your area. They played. You guys, are- they actually they played at half time as well at the Did game. They? Yeah, so Just I think there was something strategic behind noses. that. But you know what? <laughs> um, for me, the most important part is winning the game of football. And we were able to do that on the weekend, which was which was good. But I think it was a good game, to be honest. I think it was a really good game. I was obviously playing on it. I've had the chance to watch it back as well. I thought it was a really high-quality game, to be honest. Both teams looked good. Both teams had the chances. Um, it was a very even game, and I suppose at the end of the game, you just you get that penalty. You know, sometimes they're given, sometimes they're not. You've probably seen it given against you and for you. I'm not complaining. Noel Bottage tucked it away, and that's all she wrote. Yeah, no, it was it was a it was a really good game, and and the other thing was the crowd was great. I think ten thousand people were for, for Melbourne City. I don't know if they even broke ten thousand once last year. So at home. Uh, Think this, they didn't lose either last year at home, so yeah. now they've lost their first game in front of ten thousand. But but hopefully, you know, they keep coming out because it was a really good crowd. That it looked like a good spectacle, like you said, the quality was there. I think Melbourne City would feel hard done by to lose the game, but at the same time, it could have went either way, and that's that's kind of what you want. It's uh, it's interesting to see Pena back now in the league, and he looked he looked sharp in moments. But I think you know, as you you're probably training with him every day, so you know better. But he, he looks like he's only going to get only going to keep getting better and stronger and fitter. So. It's exciting to see you guys, I guess, you know, with that with that quality um, and Melbourne City, you playing against them, um, you know, you would know that, you know, even though they didn't win the game, they were still dangerous, weren't they? And they've yeah, recruited 100%. really well. Yeah. They've recruited well again. And um, my boy Tarsley. He's, Tarsley. Uh, <laughs> the Tarsley. <laughs> he was on fire. He must have heard it and he must have been... He must have been pissed off that this guy, Stefan Moore, doesn't even know my name. Doesn't even know my fucking name. The disrespect on him. Uh, but but what our, Johnny Warren, our Johnny Warren picks, hey, after round one, looking all right. Yeah, Arslan, Kenya, O'Shea. The only one is Lolly, and that probably leads us into the next game. Yeah. Melbourne victory versus Sydney FC, the big blue, and victory got the got the job done. Yeah, yeah. I I was um I, I was tipping Melbourne Victory to be better, like to be a lot better this year. But but I also tip Sydney FC um to keep on building on that form of the the cup. I don't know how much you got to watch of this game, but I was I was in the hotel in in Yamaguchi um twiddling my thumbs. So I was uh, I was watching it watching it while I was eating dinner and then watching it back in my room. And yeah, Victory Victory was solid. They they look like they're 
they've recruited again they've recruited well teague looked really good for me a good good simple you know number eight ball playing midfielder defensively looked solid didn't try and do too much but that's what you want in the middle of the park to complement you know the other players and and McCutch, uh i think he started you know probably the first 60 70 minutes 80 minutes even until he scored the goal like he was very he looked like oh it's an almost moment it's an almost moment but I believe that if a player keeps getting into the right positions and he keeps doing stuff that you're like, oh, he's almost he's almost done something that's that's dangerous there, he's a good player. Because if you're not noticing him, that's more of the problem. And he ended up uh, just bulldozing uh, <laughs> the center back. And, and, and it was, uh, it was, a, it was good a pretty goal. funny goal. It was a good goal. Um, yeah. He did well afterwards, though. Strong. He looks strong. I don't know if you played them in preseason, but he looks like he's a No, beast. we didn't. Yeah, he does. He does look like a beast, to be fair. And I've spoken to a few people from there, and they're like, yeah, he's, he's a bit of a beast. So, and um, obviously Bruno Fornaroli is aging like a like a fine wine. He he got his goal as well. Um, there was whispers it could have maybe been a free kick. I don't know. I only actually really saw the goals from that game. I just finished the game. I yeah. had it on in the background, not really watching it too much. So. I was quite surprised. We were on obviously. the beers, on the beers already celebrating after round one. We were celebrating. We were celebrating. <laughs> what do you What do you want? <laughs> but, uh, but, um, yeah, you know, I think we were we were expecting Sydney FC to to kick on from the Australia Cup, like we sort of said. So mm. for me, I'd be if I was Melbourne Victory, I'd be taking a lot of confidence out of that because yeah. I think that'll probably be a hard place to go for a lot of teams this year. Yeah, so, no, but round one, they're they're, they're confident. Just under fifteen thousand there. Good traveling support. Yeah, it was a good three. crowd. Probably a part. I'll give them a pass mark as well. We want to be pushing twenty. They got twenty thousand members, so they should uh, be. That, getting that's a better. 20, look, that's a better crowd. Uh, for me, that's yeah. a better crowd than than um, City versus Western United. I, I would hope that two Melbourne teams are pulling in twenty k at Amy Park yeah. as well. So Saturday yeah, five thirty. Right. What else? What else are you doing? But. Yeah. That's enough of the yeah. of the crowd chat. You know, we we want the game to grow. We we come from a good place when we talk about this stuff. We we just want to see the league supported. We know that there's quality yeah. in the league. So, um, yeah. But the next game, I guess. Well, or just just quickly on it, I guess for you, did you? I get maybe you didn't see enough of it, but um, what did you think about Arzani? Did you see? Did you see enough of him? Um, I actually no, nah, I really didn't see this game closely be honest when i was trying to watch it it was sort of on the tv and i couldn't really see it um yeah. and then we were getting changed whatnot so yeah it was sort of hard to follow i saw the goals when the goals happened i went up to the tv sort of watched it closely but no what did you think what were your thoughts yeah i thought they i thought he was i thought it was all right i think he you know he's got to build his he looked like he was playing a little bit more simple um but you know i reckon the way they play victory you know on both wings you've got Azani. You've got uh, Nish Falufale that we, that started that game, but then on the bench you got Falami and Economides yeah. to come on. So if you, if you're a fullback, uh, you're in for a tough game because if if the ones that start aren't aren't performing after 60 minutes, 70 minutes, you've then got these fresh legs coming on who are who are top class winners in the league. So it's um it's going to be interesting, I guess, to see who who I guess cements themselves as the the starting players, but and then Brimmer to come off the bench. So overall yeah. victory, yeah, victory. Got some uh, debt. Oh, I think they've they've got a good they've got a good squad and yeah um, yeah let's 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 see how they go the next the next game Western Sydney and Wellington I I said to my coach listen I've just started this new podcast I I can't play this game I need to be watching this otherwise I can't talk about it and he said listen Seth it's a big game against Yamaguchi I think you're gonna do well so he, he gave me the start and I, I bagged I bagged the goal to kind of make it worth my while at least anyway but I've missed I've missed the entire game so you're gonna have to talk about this one yeah and to be honest I actually didn't see all of this game as well because I was supporting the West United women team who got a win against Melbourne victory so um I was sort of flicking between the two um I didn't see a little bit of the first half for me Western Sydney looked like they were sort of controlling the game a lot more they had a lot more of the chances. Um, for me, the talking point is Alex Paulson because yeah, he had he had, he had a worldie. He had a worldie, and yeah. I think Nick Milanovic for me looked probably like the most dangerous player from from Western Sydney. Sort of everything was really going through him. Most of his actions were very direct. He was either getting crosses in the box. He came in on his left a couple of times. Also, the shot that that Paulson saved from his right foot, which was going top bins. For me, that's. That's probably going to be close to the save of the season. Yeah. <laughs> Not but, bad in round one. 
yeah, of course. So, yeah, that w- it was a bit of a, it's a nil all. It's nil all. The game finishes nil all. So, I don't know. I think stay from mate. what I saw, yeah, it was a, it was a good old fashioned stalemate. From what I heard from the coaches, Rudin was definitely more the disappointed of the two coaches, and I think that probably tells the story of the game that Western Sydney did probably have the better of the chances. But in saying that, in the second half. I think it was Pennington had a header. Lawrence Thomas made an unbelievable save as well. And you could, the game could sort of go either way. You don't take your chances and then Wellington yeah. go up. It was a top ball by Barbarousas and then um, Pennington just missed the missed the header. I think it was Pennington. Don't crucify me yeah. if, I'm, if I'm incorrect, but we'll give it to him. It anyway. was, but yeah, I guess that's, that's you know what, like a lot of Western Sydney games last year, they they, they keep clean sheets. They, they play probably a style of, of play where it's very controlled. That's the way Rudin likes to be defensively pretty solid. So it's not it's not a it's not a great start at home. Um, that leads us on to the topic of three o'clock kickoffs. And and yeah. I was having a chat with someone on, on on Twitter about this because people complained about it. It was hot, and the crowd. I don't know what the figures were for that. And people are saying it's too hot. We're not going to go to the game. Western Sydney's hotter, and blah blah blah. I get it. What's what's your take on it? To be honest, because I want to hear what yeah. you say before I kind of voice my opinion. Yeah, look, the middle of summer, if it's going to be scorching, but that's the thing when you put out the fixtures at the start of the season, you're not going to know what the weather is for every individual game. And I think from a perspective of maybe Paramount and things like that, obviously they want to have the game spread out so people can be watching all the games because it doesn't make sense if all the games are on at one time and you know people can only watch one game. So I understand it from that point of view and spreading the game out, the games out across the day, because it is good. It is good on a Saturday to have you know the three thirty, the five thirty, the seven forty five. But those games, oh, we've both played in a. They're fucking shit. They're shit. Yeah. And you're watching on TV, and I'm going. The standard looks a bit. It's a bit slow. The game, but you're sitting on your couch with the aircon on, and they're out there playing in 30, 35 degree heat. It's three p.m. hottest part of the day. And then that's obviously going to affect crowds as well. So, mm. and some stadiums are better for it than others. Don't get me wrong. You know, Tom Bank's an unbelievable stadium and you, and you do probably get that little bit of shade. You've got the stands all round. But, but I think, I when think you plan- on that, on that though, it's the, it's the corporate side that's actually got the shade. I think the other side where the, the, the punters are, the general admission, they're in the sun. So I guess that, that's probably losing maybe those, you know, one to two to three thousand that are like, I'll go to it. And then they're like, you know what? I'm going to be sitting in the Fucking sun. I'm going to be roasting. Yeah. And that's where, that's where it's, I, I understand it. And this is, this is where I get it. But you know, like you're talking about the fixtures and you're talking about middle of summer. We're in spring. It's October. It's the middle of October. It's not even summer yet. And you look at the rest of the week, because I looked at the rest of the week and I looked at the rest of the, the country as well for, for this weekend's games. They're all fine, the temperatures, and you can't control yeah. it. Like, you physically no, can't. No. I, I, I believe, you know, in here in Japan, what they do is the start of the season, it's winter, so it's freezing. Um, and then you go into, uh, into, into what is it, spring, and all the games are like, what is it, 12.30, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock kickoffs. You get the odd night game in J2. But then once it goes to summer, the whole summer, there's not one game during the, the day. It's... Six o'clock, seven o'clock, potentially eight o'clock, maybe even some teams as well. And I think that's a great way to do it. But it, it's we could it's do one that. Of those ones. I think we yeah, could do and, that. Honestly, and, and with I, the with the early games, October, November, you could have you know you have the games throughout the day. It's no problem. December, January, potentially even February, maybe try and stick yeah. to you know at least the five thirty. Because for me, the five thirty, it, it's not too bad. It's starting to cool down. The sun's still up. But once the sun sort of does go down, maybe second half of the game, it's it's yeah. okay. But those three o'clock, and how many times have you gotten to the stadium? It's thirty five degrees, and they come in. Are oh, the games have been delayed? Yeah, it's, it, yeah. it's happening. No, they... And and the standard shit. It's slow. It's not good to watch. It's not good for the punters that are sitting in the sun with kids and things like that. So, yeah, it, it's not it's not ideal. The three it's, o'clock. It's tough because. I think they need to cut it off once, and hopefully they. Ha- I think they have done that this year for for once it becomes summer. But you know what? It, it, and again, like you have all these fans complaining, and I get why why they're complaining. But a year in Japan, you know, like they they don't complain about it. The fans, no. you know, what you get a few less people, and our stadium in the that 
that you know the non-covered side is there's there's no shade at all you're in the sun they've got their their umbrellas yeah in the shade before the game they've got their fans and they're there like they don't yeah they, you know what they're not happy but they're there two hours before the game as well we're rocking yeah. up on the bus and they're there chanting and then you've got people in australia complaining about it and don't get me wrong i know it's hot in australia it's hotter here and it's more humid here yeah they still come so yes i get it but Stop fucking complaining as well. If you want to go to the game, Just go to the game. To the if games. you don't want to go to the game, no worries. But don't complain about it because then when we put games on at the same time, you get the same people saying, I want to watch both games. I can't watch them both <laughs> at once. So, fuck me. Doomed if you do, doomed if you don't. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah that's, that's enough of, the, of that game anyway. Um, the last game, Perth versus Newcastle. And that was, a, that was a top game. It was a good game for a neutral. I enjoyed watching that one. Yeah, yeah, I uh, I saw the first half, um, and and then I had to go and get dinner because I just got back from from my my trip, so I had to go and eat something. But uh, good again, two teams we probably didn't know much about. We we're both a little bit like unsure of uh, new coaches, few new players. But yeah, the, the quality of the game was good. Like the you know Perth Glory scoring in the first couple of minutes. Tags, I put the captain on him in fantasy. So yeah, thanks for that one. Thanks for that one, big thanks, tags. Mate. He's, uh, he he's, he was my my tip as well for the the golden boot. So I think great great for him. And then Jets kind of started to dominate the game. Like sometimes it's dangerous when you score early, isn't it? Because then you you kind of get a bit complacent and you let the other team yeah. have the ball. Yeah, and then Groza scored a bomb. That's goal of the week sure. for sure. That one. Yeah. So, wow. He's not gonna, no... he's not going to hit one better than that. Yeah. No. Nah, what a hit. And then I think got the assist as well for for Stamathlopoulos's goal. Uh, he was someone that we spoke about, so yeah, I think it was a it was a really really good game. And Kolakowski obviously came off the bench, was someone that didn't even really play at all last year. So his move from Melbourne City to to Perth didn't really work out. But hopefully he's sort of back under Stadjic and and can impact. Bit of, the a, bench bit of a hero, and, isn't he? In in the league, yeah. yeah. And the fans love him. You probably know more about him than what I do, but everyone everyone oh, seems to love him. So. They're, uh, they're buzzing he that pulled, he was following he, he out pulled out, He pulled it out as well, the little dance. So, yeah. Nah, I think he, he's one of those guys, like, you, you can't hate him. He's, he's just a good guy. He's a, he's a laugh and he's a good guy yeah. to have around. So, hopefully, he can he can do a little bit better this year. But um, I think on the bright side for, for Perth Glory, obviously, we didn't speak about it last week. It sort of came out after the podcast release. But they've got their, their owners, yeah. which is great news. I think the Prime Land Group. Um, construction construction company from Melbourne. I yeah. think they're sort of all over, but I think that's that's positive signs and that's really good for for Perth Glory. And then on the other side of that, the other team in that game, Newcastle Jets, have just announced their formal sale process is sort of getting underway. Yeah. So I think probably going off the back of Perth Glory, we've got Auckland now. Things look like they're going in the right directions with you know being able to get the right people on board that are going to help to grow this league, grow the clubs. And I think that's that's good timing for Newcastle Jets. I think it's time that they need to get someone in there that can they can get in there and really help the club move it forward in the way that they want to do it. And I think that'll be um, really good if they can get the right the right bidder. Yeah, no, I I reckon Perth Glory. I listened to um, was a three AW the, the 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 maybe the owner of Prime Land. Um, he's going to come in and be the CEO. I think it is Robert Robert Bridge or Bridge, Bridge yeah, however Robert you pronounce Bridge, yeah. it. Um. And he spoke really well. He, he's a football guy. He, he's, he's been around the place. He, he understands, you know, they spoke, they asked the questions about, you know, well, if you're buying this league, you know, obviously it's about, you know, funds management, their developers. But, you know, do you think you're going to make money on this? And, and he was pretty honest and just said, listen, I, I understand owning a football club is probably not going to make me money. In the long run, maybe, maybe it can, but he, he wants to be involved. He's a football fan. He's going to move over from Melbourne to Perth to actually really connect the the community and the Perth. I think he spoke about the government. He spoke about Football West. He said all the right things, which is talks cheap. It's really easy. But again, yeah, you've had cool. plenty of other people own clubs that don't say the right things. And and that's the warning signs already. So it's great. It's great that he's he's moving there. He's actually going to be involved on the the day to day stuff. So they don't want to they don't want to recycle players. They want to start you know bringing through the the Perth the Perth talent uh, in in both the, the the boys and the girls juniors, which which is all positive because you know when we were juniors playing against them, they were actually it was us SA and WA with the, the two strongest states. Yeah, so yeah, they've yeah. got a they've got a lot of talent, don't they? And and I think it's it's good. And then like you said, Newcastle, 
another ones they've kind of just been if you're a fan there what why are you buying a membership when when you're looking at the club and it seems like it's a shambles you know so yeah, you don't really this, see this that is, direction this is all positive and then that goes into i think you've got auckland that they've announced that i think right but you know what they got to get a move on with canberra as well because both of those teams they need to start signing players players become uh available on you know for the the punters at home January 1 or January yeah, 6 months out from when your contract ends is when you can start talking technically even though your agent may be talking before but <laughs> you can sign uh you can sign a contract 6 months out if you're coming off contract so you know for you for you as a as a player an A league player if there's two new teams coming in you might be able to get a bit more money and um, and these new teams they want to secure players as quick as possible so Canberra and and Auckland if they're coming into the competitions they want to get their squad together. If they can start getting young boys and start training with them already, they can start making some signings for next year, get things in, in the, the pipeline. You want to get onto that because, you know, there's not a whole lot of Australian players out there and, and where are you going to find an extra, you know, there's an extra 23 on each list. You've only got five foreigners. So that's yeah. 36 players across Australia. In, in Auckland, you're obviously going to have a lot of Kiwis. But I don't know how deep their talent pool runs there. So you, you've, got to, you've got to start kind of uh, recruiting already. Yeah, they've got to get a move on a little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Will they do? Will they maybe stagger it? Who knows? We don't know. We I don't. I don't reckon. I don't, think, I don't think you know. Getting in, getting in a buy. I don't think that that's good. But again, if you don't have the right people coming in with the money, let's let's see. Because there's there's the talk of the second division. I think the end of it, the expression of interest or not expression of interest. Sorry, the um, the the stage two and stage three kind of going through all the proposals is coming to an end in the end of October as well. So. You know what? If you're a player and you're kind of out of contract, um, or you're 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 doing well in the NPL, yeah. You know what? You want to make sure you, that you 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 kind of got your phone on loud because you might be getting a few phone calls from from different organisations. So it's um it should be an exciting time and more players in the in professional setups, uh, more coaches, more things to talk about. Maybe we can do two everything. episodes a week. It's it maybe knows? maybe we might <laughs> we might start doing a daily air. I don't know if people get sick of it, but. Yeah, it's going to be better. It's going to be better because how many players do you have across MPL across Australia, and people are going, "Oh, he could have, he could have easily been playing in the in the A League, or he could have easily been playing professionally." We want our talent pool to be deeper. We want our talent pool to be as big as possible. Why do you think in the countries that are so successful internationally, it's because in their countries, in England, in all of these countries, even in Japan, if you look at Japan, and they're a, a sort of a direct opponent for us in Asia. And you've spoken so much about the talent pool over there compared to us. We've got this top league and underneath that it's MPL. And, you know, we've both said this, that the jump is too big. It's too big and that we need to sort of make that gap smaller. I think this is the way to do it. I hope it can happen. I, I want to see more young players getting chances. Yeah. You know what? Maybe they're not going to be as good as the ones that are currently in A-League set up, but if you don't give them a chance to improve, if you don't get them in that environment to to get them training every day, see what they can do, you'll never know. And there's probably so many that do slip through the cracks here. And you know, we want to we want to get that talent pool as big as possible. I think it's going to be it's going to be good. Yeah, and we we will talk on that in another episode into more depth with the second division and the gap and when players have come and trialed with us. But um, we need to get a, a bit of a move on and and jumping from. This segment, where we're now going into the inner game story of the week. Uh, this is something that we've we've brought in. We had a chat. We've got plenty of stories, and we were thinking, how can we how can we do this in a way um, where we get one out a week? And and this one is probably the best. I reckon. Wow. So we'll start with a bang. I it's don't the know. Best. If we it's the best for you. This, <laughs> This is the Inner Game Story of the Week. This segment is brought to you by the Inner Game Journals, started by none other than our co-host, Stefan Mork. The Athlete Performance Journals were created to help athletes of all abilities become more self-aware through goal setting and reflection. On or off the field, the mental side of the game is so crucial to help you feel and perform at your best. Head over to www.theinnergamejournals.com and use code FOOTBALLFRIENDS to get 15% of all products. If you're a club, school, or academy you're in luck Stefan also runs workshops and he's just released the app version which will allow you to give direct feedback to players download the app for free today search the inner game on the app store so it's the best for you but it's not the best for yeah. me no I, I think 
to to give everyone uh, an understanding of this, we were a lot younger. We were we were back in Melbourne. We won't give too many details of of when it was because uh, I don't think I'll get in trouble. But but Ben could. So we won't go into too many details of the specifics. But you know, young boys, we're living in Melbourne. We want to go out every now and again when it's right, when it's the right time. When we've got a seven eight day break, of course. No, um, I wanted to go out. Dragging you out was fucking impossible. I reckon it, if I didn't live with you back then and I lived with someone else, I probably wouldn't have still been a professional footballer. But I wanted to it go like, out. Yeah. You were going to sleep at fucking 9 p.m. every night. I'm going, I'm 18 years old living in Melbourne, man. I've got to be fucking making the most of this time. <laughs> and you were going to sleep at 9 p.m. Uh, so you were definitely the, the more professional one back then. But that probably, yeah, probably was... explains a little bit about this story. Yeah, and I think I think we we both, you know, you helped me as well sometimes get out of my own head by going and doing other things where I was thinking too much about football and doing everything right, and and you were probably you know stopping stopping at Macca's on the corner there of, of Plenty Road having too many cheeseburgers and um and going out a little bit. But we were we were young boys. We had a we had a couple of days off. We decided to go out. We went to the first pub we went to. I think we were maybe there with a with a, a couple of other players, or maybe it was just ourselves at that one first. We had a few no, drinks. No, there was a few of us, you know, I think. Just, there was a few of us. Just to, just to wet the whistle, a few uh, a few beers, everything's few going well. We, we get the call saying, yeah, you can, come to, you can come to this next place. We've got you on the list. We've got you a, a booth. We've got a bottle here sorted. I think it was Chica that sorted it, big Frank Ciccone. Yeah. Um, he, he was the guy that always sorted Eve. us out. And we've, Eve not we've, we've thought... Let's go. Eve it is. Perfect place to go. Um, I, I, I think you were single at the time. I was, I wasn't. So you were the yeah. one, you were the one that was, I think that was, it was like, yeah, let's go, let's go. And I was like, ah, oh, whatever. It doesn't matter too much. We get there. A few other boys are, are coming as well. Everything's flying. Drinks are coming left, right and yeah, center. It's a good night. And it was I'm a like, good night. Oh. And, and there was, there was, there was plenty, there was plenty for us, I guess, to be, to be looking at there as well. A bit, a bit of talent there. Um, bit of talent. And then the next thing, I'm, I'm, I'm looking around and I'm just like, where the fuck is this guy? Like, where's he gone? And then I just see you walking around with the bottle of Grey Goose straight in the mouth. And I'm thinking, fuck, you know, this guy's going for a big one. And I'm like, all right, I've got to, I've got to keep up with him. I'm, I'm, I'm normally in bed at nine o'clock. It's, it's probably one, two o'clock here. So my eyes are getting tired. I've got to have a few more drinks. And I said to you, I remember this as well. I said, listen, if you're going home with a bird, tell me because I'm going then as well. Or we're jumping in the cab together because it's a long way to Bandura from the city. And back and we then were, we were on fucking we were peanuts. Super, yeah, we were in <laughs> super fuck all. So it so was I'll, like, come on, man. I mean, we're either getting the tram home. Remember we used to get the tram home? Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, getting an Uber. Disaster. We're paying surge. We have to go together. So <laughs> I, I do remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah, sure you do. Sure you do. But then we're, we're there a bit longer. There was a couple other teammates there. I'm sitting down on the couch fucking being a bit boring. And then I'm just like, where is this guy now? Again, he's gone missing. Fucking hell. He's just fucking put the invisible cloak on and, and he's gone. And I'm like, no, he'll turn up. He'll turn up. I'm there for maybe 30 minutes, an hour. Start messaging, start calling. Nothing. No answer. I think it was straight to voicemail. And I'm like, nah, I'm fucking raging at this guy. Like starting, it's abuse. It's abusive text messages coming yeah, through. And I'm bad, like, I'm not, wa- I'm not waiting anymore. I'm in the cab and I'm getting angrier in the cab thinking I've got to fucking pay for this one all myself. Get, get home and I'm, I'm steaming as well. I, I, I message, I'm like, it's probably three in the morning, four in the morning. And I'm like, this guy's still not answering. He's not home. I thought you were going to be home and I was going to come into your room and smash you. But then, then we, I wake up, I reckon it's maybe seven o'clock still. I reckon it was, it was, it was. Yeah, no, yeah, it would have been o'clock. maybe six, six thirty. I don't know. And, and I start, I start getting like a couple of messages from you and I'm like, Fucking doesn't make any sense. What's this? What's this guy even trying to say? So then you you call me, and and you're like, I've just been in. I've just been in the hospital, <laughs> and I'm like, what do you mean you've oh, been in the hospital? Middle, man. You got the fucking the yellow the yellow bag, and I'm like, what the fuck's happened here? You're like, oh look, 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 you sent me photos of when you're in the hospital with the fucking the the echo on. You've got the heart rate fucking going because they're they're worried that you're probably gonna fucking pass out or die, man. And then. Oh, what, what happened? I just, what no, I just remember, I, I, do, I remember just walking into your room and like, I remember getting up, I'm in this hospital. Look, this was the one night, never ever in my life. And we used to say it all the time. 
we were so fucking quiet back then. We were 17, 18 years old. We didn't say boo at training. We were shitting ourselves. We got all these fucking older blokes. I never even showered with, with people before. We got to start showering. It was all this stuff. It was so foreign <laughs> to us. And we were like, fuck, team night out, team dinner, it's compulsory. This is our chance there. We can, we can, you know, we can get one on under here. They might like us. So I remember <laughs> we used to go to these team nights out and we just used to start and punching them back. Well, what were we thinking? We were 18 years old. We couldn't drink. Like these guys are just, hey, take it easy, man. Take it easy. No, nah, no, nah, we're all right. We're all right. Yeah, I remember but, the <laughs> and yeah, man, this night, I, but this, was just, yeah, this was, this was the worst it was, it ever was. And, um, <laughs> I just remember, yeah, I stepped over that rope with the grey goose and that's it. And that's all I remember. Like, that is all I remember. I wake up. I've got this <laughs> nurse got, in my got... face. <laughs> How many fingers am I holding up? <laughs> yeah, three. How many fingers am I holding up? Yeah, five. Oh, yeah, all right. He's all good. He's all good. Get him ready to go. And I was like, <laughs> and hell, man, what's happened? I grabbed the bag next to me. I'm like, where's all my stuff? I'm in casual clothes at this point. They've given me some, like, lost property clothes. Like, yeah, anyway give me my hazardous bag. I'm like, where's all my stuff? They're like, yeah, everything's in the hazardous bag and your phone and wallet and keys and stuff are in there. All right, no, I put my hand into this thing. Man, my jeans. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> Good talent. But let me, let me shut his pants. Four, yeah. <laughs> and man, I was like, what's happened? Grab my phone. I remember at that stage, I was like, yeah, I'm sober now. So this is all good. This is all good. I messaged you. I was like, hey, Steph, I'm coming home. That's what I thought I wrote. I fucking was typing gibberish because it made no sense. I walk out the front. I get into a cab. I say, bro, take me to Bandura, please. I'm still steaming at this point. Guy starts driving. We're on the phone at this point. We're on the phone yeah. at this point. You remember? And the guy, the, guy, the cabbie started driving and I go to him, man, you're going the wrong way. I said, Bandura. <laughs> He goes, I am going to Bandura. I said, trust me, I know where I am. Go this way. He was like, all right. <laughs> I just crash in the back of this taxi. I wake up. I look out my out the window. I'm on fucking beach road. I'm heading towards Chelsea. I'm like thinking, <laughs> oh my God. I look at the meter. It's at like 85 bucks already. I'm thinking. <laughs> I just go to the cabbie. Hey, yeah, you were right. You were around. <laughs> go back to Bandura. <laughs> So after all oh. of that, I crashed again. I crashed again in the in the um in the taxi, and then I just get this like tap on my leg. Hey mate, you're here. I right, looked up. Yeah, I'm fucking. I'm home now. Perfect. Get out. I think the Uber cost me, or the taxi at that time, cost me like a hundred and something bucks, hundred and like forty <laughs> bucks, hundred and fifty bucks, and I got a thousand dollar ambulance call out fee, and I was <laughs> scratched up all over my body. <laughs> It was just a night to forget, man. Mm. Never again. I, Never it, again. It was a big night, and and you've uh, you, you've made me feel better because I've never been so angry at you. I don't think even when you smashed that slushy on my head, it, it, it went away. It went away like it went away like that when I walked how, in that door. How, how can I be? How can I be angry when you come in? And I was still angry when you were messaging. I was like, what the fuck's this guy talking about? You come in. You're explaining the story to me because you've sobered up a bit as well by this point, which was good. The, yeah, the, was the extra right. 30 minutes in the cab was good. You've come in, you've got the yellow bag and you're like, bro, I've shut myself. Fucking hell, look at this. You've still got the things on your on your, on your your chest. And I'm like, no, I could not stop laughing for maybe <laughs> bro, 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, that was and, the hardest. And then you, ever. you wanted to fucking put the jeans in the washing machine with your shit yeah. on them. I said, ah, ah. Those jeans are worth fucking 70, 80 bucks from General Pants Co. No, they were the ML bin. Denim. ML Denim oh, back then. <laughs> what a disaster. And then I've called Carla as well and said, listen, Carla, because I was telling her, well, this guy is fucking an idiot. Like, le left me on, on my own. So like, I've called her, telling her the story. I couldn't even speak that. I was laughing so hard. Oh, what a night. What a night for you. And I, um, look, <laughs> this is the for inner game stories of the week. They, they're done. <laughs> The, it's the first and last. <laughs> I'm going to think of the worst one because this this is the worst one. This is the worst one straight off the bat. And yeah, it was. Um, if if you want to hear more of our night out stories, there, there is a few others. So um, yeah, let us know if, if you we guys enjoyed a, that a, one. A few, but... a few more, but it's yeah, yeah. I don't think you're going to be able to top it. You've literally you've left me. I've been raging. You then shat yourself. Ended up in the hospital. And I just remember the messages, and... man. The messages. Oh. You're the most fucking shittest friend ever. 
first you fucking leave and now you fucking make me get a cab by myself i fucking said that we'll leave together you're a fucking dog oh but brilliant you know what Bro. i would love to go back to those days when yeah, you could go out days, and, and have a few drinks and you wake up the next day and you feel not too bad now i've really drunk all year but i remember last year whew, i have three or four drinks i don't get my eight hours in Man, I'm a disaster yeah, the next you're day. You're struggling, so man. And you never thought of me... stuff when you were younger. <laughs> you never thought of... Yeah, I should have made the most... I'm... I go out now and I'm like, as soon as I get out water, got to get hydrated. Oh, fuck, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> getting a good sleep. And back then, those days, like you didn't think about any repercussions. You just went out. I'm like, what uh, were we thinking, man? Getting that trust. It's... Uh, <laughs> no, but... it's... Uh... It's it's good, all good fun. And, and we hope you've enjoyed that one. Um, we'll, we'll keep them coming. But the, the next thing... Uh, which we, we sent out to everyone for your questions of the week. I'll, I'll read the first one out uh, from Adrian. He said, for, is it for both of us, how would you compare the standard of the A-League versus J2 or SPL? So we'll go you first with, with the SPL. You were there a couple of years ago with, with Hearts. I know it's always hard to compare the leagues, but what, what can you say, especially with so many Aussie boys in, in Scotland right now? It'd be good for the, the, the Australian public to hear from, from a player that's played in the, both leagues. Yeah, thanks, Adrian, for the question. Um, it, it is a hard one to compare the two leagues. For me, the biggest difference over there is there is that promotion and relegation. So you know that you maybe might be versing a team who probably quality-wise, I would say, I would argue that probably the top six, the top five or six clubs in Scotland, that they, they would probably compete well in the A-League. And I would say the bottom five or the bottom six would honestly struggle, like, on just quality mm. but the difference over there is they're fighting relegation so when you're fighting relegation these guys are fucking running all game they don't <laughs> give you one easy touch they don't give you one easy pass every no, single trying to play team, out from the back are they they're not trying to play out from the back it's a fucking grind like this game is a grind and you're not getting an easy win and that's that's the reality of it and because there is promotion relegation it it brings that and the players maybe know that you know what? We don't have the same quality as Celtic, Rangers, Hearts, Hibs. So if we don't match them in the fight, we've got no chance. So these guys are fucking giving everything to win. And obviously, that's what happens when there's promotion and relegation. We Over here, we don't have that. So if you've got a coach and you're coming 12th, but the coach says, no, 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 I don't care. I want to keep playing my football. I want you guys to play Tiki Tucker. There's no pressure there. You might lose the game 5-0. Is it right? Is it wrong? Look, I don't know. But for me, that's the biggest difference. I would say quality-wise, yeah. the quality in the A-League is so much better than people think. And people think just because you go to Europe that you're 10 times better. Oh, he's in Europe now. He should be in the Socceroos. It's like, well, if you actually look at the club he's gone to, I would say that club there probably wouldn't even beat most of the teams in the A-League. And there's yeah. been examples of that, but I think that's the biggest misconception in our country is that the A-League shit you got to be in Europe if you want to be considered a serious player. And mm. the A-League's so much better. And, you know, you bring in the foreigners, the internationals, so many Socceroos in the league. The standard's very good here. You'd be playing on, on yeah. some top quality players. I think you even saw that on the weekend. Like, some of the, the new international players are going to be super exciting this year. And I don't know, uh, what, what would you say? What would you say with J2 compared to the A-League? Yeah, I'll, well, I'll, I'll echo what you've said about the relegation. You know, the other thing is, you know, Scotland's similar to the A-League where there's 12 teams, you're playing each team four times. But here, you know, we've got 22 teams in the league. So you've got 21 away trips, 21 home, 42 games. It is fucking long. It's a yeah, long that's... season. And the same thing, any second division around the world, it's more physical. It's more up and down because the quality is is lesser um with you know with some of the players so you don't get punished when you make a mistake as much um so it's a little bit more transition similar probably similar to the a league in in that way but man they press they press like crazy here and they're all machines yeah. um and that's even the, the game on the weekend we played a team yamaguchi they're fighting for survival they got a point against us and that could be the point that keeps them up but they were yeah. just they tried to play out a little bit but a lot of it they were going long and we said first 10 minutes long and behind but we didn't get out of that then. So we kept, we went into their game style of fighting instead of trying to play. When I'm fucking trying to scream at everyone to say, relax, just play out from the back now. But it's hard because if they're bringing you into that type of game, your quality drops. And maybe the intensity is okay and it's a fight out there, but 
in the A-League, you don't really get teams playing like that because everybody thinks, you know what, I want to play a certain way and I'm going to yeah. implement that system uh, because there isn't the stress, there isn't the pressure on the coaches, on the players. Uh, overall, I would say Japan is unbelievable. Like J1, J2, the players. We have 30 players in the squad and you could probably, the first 22, we change players, four or five players, I swear, every week. It's, it's a little bit frustrating sometimes, but the depth is so big and it's the same in J1. The talent pool is so much deeper. So in training, you've got to fight every day to earn your position. Where in the A-League, you kind of know the starting 11. There's maybe two yeah. or three players that could come in. But again, really hard to compare the two. I don't know where you'd see. You've got Kofu that's playing against Melbourne City. They're a J2 team and they, they put out their second 11 team against Melbourne City in Melbourne. They look just and as true. strong. So... Yeah. There, there you go. There's a bit of a tight one for you. But again, it's different football. Um, so we'll, we'll we'll go on to the next one. Um, and you can read this one out, uh, Ben. What have we got? It's from uh, Boots Atelli. Boots Atelli. Thanks for the question, Boots Atelli. What's it like when big name marquee signings arrive? Best slash worst experience, etc. So it's, it's a good question. Do you want to do you want to start, Steph? Yeah. Well, I. I think we were both lucky when we were at Melbourne City. We got to see quite a few big names and Damien Duff, uh, David Villa, Harry Kuehl came as well. Well, he wasn't a marquee, but he is a marquee in itself. Vince Grella came. Um, Tommy Sorensen. Tommy Corran, Tommy Sorensen. We had a lot of big name players come into the league when we were there. Uh, and I don't have a bad word to say yeah. about any of those people. David Villa, yeah. we were at La Trobe. Uh, the bottom fields before the, the facility was built. We were literally doing ice baths in a bin and the showers were disgusting. Like, it 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 was unbelievable. Like, the David Villa, I think he just came from winning the Euros, wasn't it? Euros? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was waiting to go to New York City and he's coming into this facility and we're getting sandwiches from Brunetti's, yeah, I think the, it was as well. The portable, the portable little <laughs> physio, the physio room in the portable fucking... <laughs> Like this guy's got his own his own physio guy, strength and conditioning, and I don't know how he, he only stayed for three games. He was meant to stay for ten, and maybe that was why. But uh, I just know. remember that one day in the showers when we're, we were standing there to wait because there's only probably two or three showers, so you had to wait. You know, if you're all in there at once, and and I I can't remember if it was me or you or one other young boy. I don't even really remember, but. Someone said, oh, like, David, you go, like, before us. He was after us, but of course, you're a young boy. This guy's freaking, he's the man. And yeah. he said, no, 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 you go, you go. It's no yeah. problem. And, and straight away, like, that, that was unbelievable to see a player like yeah. that. Just, yeah, he was oh, there. That was, that was just, like, that was one in a million, no, man, playing with a player like that. Like, I was yeah. shitting, I was in the chain. I'll never forget, last day of training, I got him here because I didn't. I ended up not fucking shitting myself in the end, but I was shitting myself to ask him for these boots. What, like, like these on like, night out? Yeah, basically. It's a <laughs> thing for me back then. I just used to do that whenever. But yeah, got his personalized boots, man. I'm so glad I asked him for these. Like if I didn't, I don't know, just had something to sort of remember him. And yeah. he didn't speak the best English, but he was just such a good guy. Like, do you remember the, nice... the going... He did the going away lunch. He paid for everyone. We all got photos with him when he was leaving. Like, man, this guy's done everything in football. He doesn't need to do that. Who the fuck are we? Mad. Really? In his life, who are we? But he was good enough to do all of that. And he was su he was such a good person. Probably the best player I've ever played with. Yeah. Like, he scored that goal where, where Duffer has, has cut it back. Just simple finish, bottom corner. But you know what probably stuck with me the most about him? the ladders that he used to do. He had the smallest yeah. feet as well. Like they're probably yeah. what size six, size seven. But when yeah, he would do these size. ladders, his feet were so quick. It was actually ridiculous. And he, he didn't have a, like, you know, like some small players, they, they're quite ripped or they're stronger. You can see underneath, you're like, oh, he's quite strong. He had the body of a, of a 15, skinny, 14 yeah. year old ball, boy. Yeah. But on the field, he... you know what? goes to show doesn't matter how big you are if you can use your body well and if you can manipulate the ball no one could get near it in training it was it was unbelievable that was something that you know was so so good to play and then damien duff i don't think you can ever say a bad word about him like he he was a top guy just he was a, good, just good a typical irish just yeah. legend 
we yeah, we had look, was... we had really good experiences. For me, the biggest thing that I've probably noticed throughout the league, and I'm only speaking on sort of speculation and what you hear from other people around the league, friends and things like that, is all you all we really want as Aussies that are here, we want people to come that want to be here to play football, to to bring their experience to help younger players, to help grow the league. Um, I think that's that's all you really want. And like probably someone like a Bruno Fornaroli, like he came here, he maybe wasn't a, a marquee or a big name, but look at what he's done for for football in the country. And he loves being here. He loves, you know, promoting the league. He loves playing here. He loves the country. Like that's what you want. You want someone that really wants to be here and give something back to the game in Australia. And for me, the, the only bad experiences is when, you know, people maybe think they're coming here and it's a shit league and it's going to be easy for them. And they probably actually get here and go, fuck, it's it's not somewhere where you come to just have a yeah. holiday because we train hard and we're physically very, very good as Aussies. So I think that's that's all you could really say from bad experiences. I think we've had, I've had good experiences just yeah. like you. No, exactly. And and that, that ends our question time. We'll, we'll definitely answer some more. Um, so keep them coming through. If you've got any, we'll, we'll get the social posts out. So just drop a question, whether it's Twitter, whether it's TikTok, whether it's Instagram. I think on Spotify as well. On Spotify, so we've got it, got it behind um, or underneath so, so the, the episode. We'll, we'll link link that. Um, and that goes into the last thing, which is just previewing uh, the games for next week. And, and starting off, we've got Brisbane Raw, their first game back at Suncorp Stadium against Sydney FC. Uh, the state of origin, I think they like to create a rivalry out of everything in the A-League. So um, you've got the, the Queenslanders against the, the New South Wales team. Um, and I, I think this is going to be a good crowd for this one. I think Brisbane Raw, first game back at Suncorp Stadium, the hype's there. They've done yeah. well in the cup. Sydney FC need to bounce back. So that should be that should be a rematch. really exciting game. Yeah, yeah. It, that, it is. That should, the grand you know, final rematch. Friday, Friday night, let's let's see. And then, and then next up, um, we have Wellington Phoenix against Perth. Biggest trouble in the league. I would hate. I would hate to be playing for That's Wellington to be honest long, with that international travel. Um, That's a long Perth trip. Perth to Wellington. It's uh, it's going to be interesting how Perth how Perth goes. Second game in away from home now. Let's see. Let's see Wellington how they you know they might play differently. Um, and the next one is is you boys. Who who have you got? Western Sydney Wanderers at Combank. That's I think seven forty five or seven thirty on Saturday night. So. No excuses about the weather this time around. Um, <laughs> it's a perfect time. Saturday night, I, I hope that there's going to be a big crowd. As we said in our first episode, you know, we want to see the RBB out in full force. I did see him doing the Poznan. So, yeah, I hope that they can keep growing in numbers and, and that's going to be an exciting game as well. Yeah, yeah. It will be it'll be a good one Saturday night. Again, I've got a Sunday game, so perfect for me. I'll I'll be on the couch with my feet up watching you, uh, on critiquing Twitter. you. Um, so, and then, and then on, on the... The next day we have a, I think it's it's a triple triple header where you've got Central Coast at home against Macarthur. So I think that'll be a really exciting game. Macarthur played really good. Central Coast first home game since they won it last year. So hopefully they get a, a, get a really big, big crowd, crowd um, as, as they deserve. I know a lot of players have left, but that'll be a really good one yeah. for 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 the people on the coast. Mariners need to bounce back. They've also got the AFC Cup game in the middle of the week, both of them. So we'll, we'll see what they do with the squads, but hopefully a massive, massive turnout for Central Coast first home game after winning the championship. Yeah. And then we go into victory Newcastle, victory's first home game. I'm sure Off they're the going to get a win. massive crowd for this one. Yeah. Everyone's going to be buzzing. They've got, they've cracked 20,000 members again, which is incredible. So uh, let's, let's see what they can do. Newcastle, they've got to draw round one, but this is a, you know, it's a tough start for Newcastle. So, a way to yeah. birth, a way to victory. Yeah. Not what you want, not what you want, but you know, if they can get a win or get another draw, it, it's a good start for them. And, yeah. and then last up Sunday night, Cooper Stadium will be full, sold out. Mark you my hope words. It's full. Everyone will be there to see Toure, to see Bernardo, to see Nesta, Panash, Panash. Wow, it's it's uh it's the game you want to be at. Nick Ansel up like a salmon again. So we'll 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 see. Um, I think that could you know last up that could be the game of the round because Adelaide, you know the way they play, that game could be five all. It's uh yeah, that it's going to be, be really open. It's going to be free flowing. Um, and just lastly, we want to touch on. 
a pretty amazing thing. You know, at 14, we were we were down at Sassy, kicking the ball after playing for Adelaide City under under 15s or whatever it was. Oh, I was and, eating and you've got young, every day. <laughs> and you've got young uh, young Talia Younes for the Western Sydney Wanderers breaking Sam Kerr's record, 14 years old. And uh, I didn't see the game, but you know what? If you're training with an A-League team, men or women's at that age, you, you've got to have some ability. But to make your debut... She smashed uh, it. She smashed the record. Yeah? I, I think... Yeah, well, was, I'm pretty sure Sam was 15. I'm pretty sure everyone else on that list yeah, yeah, was yeah. 15. I was like, man, 14. That is... That's next level. So very massive yeah. congratulations to that. That's amazing. Yeah, good on her, and, and it's going to be interesting to see if she um, if she has half the career Sam has, then she's going to be pretty good. She'll probably Fine. be maybe the the third or fourth best player Australia's ever produced, to be honest. So, um, yeah, really, really exciting, and that wraps it up. Um, if you want to get in contact with us, Ben's the man. He's gonna he's gonna call out all the socials. Yeah, we're at Football Friends Pod on Instagram and TikTok. We're there for questions. Give us a follow. Stay up to date with everything that's happening and when we'll be coming with our next episodes. On Twitter, we're at Ben and Steph Pod. And also our personals, at Steph and Mork, at Ben Garuccio. Give us a follow. Stay up to date. We'll be posting everything from the episode, snippets and more to come. Thank you, guys, for tuning in. And we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. See you next week. Oh, Fred. Fuck you lot, where's the beer?